Welcome to another edition of Beards Without Borders. I am the Sultan of Silver, and thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight, the episode is brought to you by Don Julio and an English blend in a cob called uh, American Patriot. We're out in the Van Gogh room tonight. As you can see, the usual hat is not being worn. I'm wearing a tasseled scarf, actually. It's just a, a very large tasseled scarf. I don't know if you can see that. And a tasseled scarf, just kind of wrapped in kind of a turban kind of thing being that I enjoy different types of uh, costumes and wardrobe. <clears throat> I've been known to go to movies just because there's a good wardrobe. Give me a give me a good Sherlock Holmes movie and I'm there. Legend of Sleepy Hollow. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So tonight we could <clears throat> pretend that we're in a, a tent of some type of a fabric structure that was unloaded off of a horse, a camel, a wagon, a jeep, and we set it up and we have a little lantern, although it would be more of a clay lamp as opposed to an oil lantern. It would probably have, uh, it would look more like a clay, a clay dish with a, with a wick coming out of it and oil in the dish. I was out shopping today and I bought a, a new <coughs> charger for my phone. A quick charger. Charges it literally in just less than an hour. Whereas my old charger would take all night. I plug it in when I go to bed, wake up, the phone is charged. Now this thing charges it fast. It's my second one. I got it for when I'm at work. I really like the fast chargers much better. I don't know if they have uh, any kind of effect on the battery or not. I have no idea. If, if they create more wear, I, I don't know, but I guess I have to study that. There's a lot of cultures where they wrap themselves with fabrics. <clears throat> Usually not a wet culture like a like a rainforest or some in mountains, but they're usually drier, sunnier climates, sandier climates, desert. <coughs> A little cough going on tonight. Sandier, warm climates where uh, the biggest thing is to be shielded from the sun. <coughs> And they're easily cared for. They're just unwrapped and washed and hung to dry. What do people wear in your background? In your family's history, what is in your background? This is not part of my history, although I'm a wardrobe fanatic. I will wear top hats and derbies, things from a hundred years ago that you would see in photographs. <clears throat> you don't see people wearing stuff like that much today. But I will go to the, the default philosophy that when you rock a big beard, you can have anything you want. You can wear whatever you want.
Don Julio. Here's to you. In the square shot glass. Very nice. <clears throat> and the water, of course. Last time we met, I think we were on a ship. And the ship was rocking. And I said, I wish I had some type of effect where I could just like rock while I'm, uh, you know, the seas are a little bit rough and you hear creaking of, of the wood. So tonight we're in a cloth structure, a tent of some type, a canopy with a lamp. I was working the other day in some Sikhs came by, and of course they don't cut their hair, and they have magnificent beards, <clears throat> and they, the Sikhs that I know are very, very uh, stylish and dress wonderfully. And I, wanna, I, want, I want a Sikh brother to teach me how to wrap there's a certain way that they wrap their uh, turban, their head, head cloth, headpiece. And I think it's really interesting because there is a way. It's not just, it's not like what I did. This is, this is pretty much, even though it looks like a, some type of uh, Middle Eastern desert type of thing, Lawrence of Arabia kind of thing, um, it, it close up, it's basically just kind of wrapped and then put back. But I, I love, like I said, I love garb. I come from a, a working class family that dressed up maybe one day a week if they were lucky. You got a pair of dress shoes once a year, or at least a new, a new shirt or tie or something once a year. Your shoes had to last. I did not come from a family where we got new shoes every year. Being that there's so many people watching this all over the world, <clears throat> back to my question, what do people wear in your cu culture? What, what do they don? Are they, have you seen pictures of your relatives in hats or any type of head wraps or a, a cap of some type? <clears throat> I have a, a, an Irish tweed, I guess they call it like a driving cap. And it has like a little short brim. I love that. I am a big fan of the Irish tweed caps as well. Although some type of uh, wrap and shawl kind of thing or whatever you want to call it, is probably appropriate for the name the Sultan of Silver. So it's probably more, I would say, historically or uh, more accurate, right? I have a 60-year-old tweed fedora that I love. And I only wear that like in the fall and winter. 60 years old. And what's interesting is it it's so old fashioned. It just it's such a throwback. I don't know anyone who would want it. I saw the thing in a thrift store and I bought it for I I don't think I paid more than a dollar fifty for it. And it was in pretty good shape and I just kinda steamed it a little bit, brought it back to shape. But I love it. Absolutely I wear it with almost everything in the wintertime. It's such a throwback. And what's interesting is the longer your beard gets, I don't know if you can see this. Let me just move the tripod back. <clears throat> the longer your beard gets, the more interesting the look as far as hats that you wear. Like if I put on the Irish cap, it just 
look it looks like my head is flat and too low if I put on that Irish cap, although I love my Irish caps. <clears throat> I also have a, a newsboy, two or three newsboy caps. What kind of hats do you wear? What is your favorite hat or headgear? What do you like? I have tattered old baseball caps. I have a John 316 baseball cap that from a friend got me at a Cracker Barrel. I like it. But when you're wearing a very long beard, what's interesting is the things that you put on your head. Like for instance, I'm going for some new glasses real soon. And I typically wear, this is pre-beard life, I would typically wear something like this. Which when you don't have a beard, take a peek at that, when you don't have a beard, this complements the face quite well. And what happens is, when you have a big beard, and if it's, it, it could be, it could attract a lot of attention because of its size or because of its color or size and color. I find that a pair of glasses like this competes with the beard and it's just, it's just visually too much work. So my next pair of glasses I went looking today are going to be either semi-rimless or rimless. Something where you can actually see my eyes and just barely see the glasses because I for me this is the adornment in my life right now this is what makes me different and I haven't worn the Irish caps a lot because they look odd when there's a big beard what looks good with a big beard is a is a hat that's a little bit higher a derby something more defined I have a top hat I have a um, uh, a coach, a stage coach driver's hat. It looks like a, it's almost like a low top hat. And when you see old Dracula films and the coachmen are taking, uh, what's his name, Van Helsing to Dracula's castle, the coachman is always wearing a certain kind of cap. Although I never wore a Sherlock Holmes hat. I just, and I haven't seen, I think I've only seen maybe one or two of them in public, but I don't know. It, that doesn't work for me. Although the, the fur, like trapper hat, I like with the flaps coming down. I try to have pictures of all my headgear. Now this is not something I wear out in public. This is just for the beards without borders. I've, you've seen me pictures with head wraps before. I have my Cuban fedora, very short rim. Doesn't it's not like a big thing that shields a lot. It's just enough. the 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 brim is is uh, maybe an inch or two at the most coming out from from the head. I have what some people would call like a Panama Jack hat. Uh, I call it a country gentleman hat and that's a straw hat that's very wide brim, shades the face quite well. I'm lighting my pipe a lot because I'm not puffing enough you really have to get that ember in there fired up to keep it keep it going. Clothing is interesting, isn't it? The hats that people wear. Even have you ever heard people's careers referred to as, you know, a type of hat that you wear? When I come home, I wear a different kind of hat. When I go to work, I wear a different kind of, you know, I wear this kind of hat, which means you play a different role in life. Some of your favorite characters, actually, um, I'm a huge fan of J.R.R. Tolkien. And Gandalf, of course, the pipe-smoking wizard, 
who I really enjoy the character and the wisdom and can't relate to the huge wisdom that he has. But uh, as a wizard in training, um, I like to, I look, I look at some of the things that uh, people wear in movies representing different things. Like I said, I love, uh, I'm not so much like Renaissance fair, like medieval stuff, although I think the more warrior medieval clothing is pretty cool looking. I like uh, Victorian era. That, that really works well with me. Although I'm not afraid to leave Western civilization and wrap my head in a turban either. So a couple Sikhs are walking down the hall in the mall. This sounds like a joke. Two Sikhs walk into a bar. Two Sikhs, it's spelled S-I-K-H, Sikh. And they're walking past where I cut hair. And they did a double take. They're walking and they go, you know, and they look at me, big smile on their face, two thumbs up. And they went like this. Now, they might not have spoken English, I don't know, or bad English, or maybe were ashamed of their English, or were, uh, I work in a very international area. That's why I'm not afraid to do Beards Without Borders. Pointed to their beard, give me two thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. When a Sikh points to your beard <laughs> and gives you two thumbs up, you're doing all right. I used to joke around and say, uh, you know you watch Game of Thrones just for the beard ideas. There are some great beards on Game of Thrones and Vikings as well. I enjoy looking at the various hairstyles and ha heads half shaved, that kind of thing. The wardrobe in those has been absolutely magnificent, hasn't it? Don't you enjoy that? Now the pipe is gurgling. I take a pipe cleaner, which is a fuzzy cotton thing on wire, and I'll go in the pipe all the way to the bowl. Move it, twist it a little bit, pull it out, and it's wet. I'm either puffing too fast or it's very humid out. Sometimes a pipe gurgles, and you need to just put that pipe cleaner in there. This tobacco is called English Estate. It's the first English that I've ever purchased. I got it in bulk out of my tobacco place where I go. And it was the first English blend I ever tried. I, I didn't know what to think of it at first because like you smell it and you get like a whiff of hay. You get a whiff of like fresh cut green grass. You get a whiff of bonfire you get a whiff of manure. <laughs> Sometimes it smells like poop. It's just, you get a whiff of it and you're like, whew. Like people who don't know, how, like their nasal palate isn't discerning enough to, to <clears throat> distinguish between different kinds of tobacco. And sometimes when I let the inexperienced nose take a whiff of the unsmoked tobacco in the jar, they go, whew, that smells like crap or poop or manure or something. And <clears throat> there is a, if, you're, if you have ever been near a farm, on, when they're spreading the manure, there's like a, a strong, earthy, poopy smell. Um, if you're around it on a fairly regular basis, you don't notice it. But if you're from the city and you go out in the country, you're like, ah. Seek gave me two thumbs up. Big, big white beard. Kind of looked like me. So maybe tonight's episode is <clears throat> unconsciously or subconsciously influenced by the man who gave me two thumbs up and pointed to the beard. 
another two weeks and it's going to be the National Beard and Mustache Championship in Nashville. I will be a judge there. Find them on Facebook. National Beard and Mustache Championship. I'll be there. I'm not sure if I'm going to be smoking a cigar or pipe outside the Ryman Theater, but say hello if you happen to go there. Uh, say hello to me. Tell me who you are. Thank you. I, I would appreciate that, too. Roommate got back today. <clears throat> Actually, last night. So... Now I have to cooperate with somebody. <laughs> I can't be a grumpy old hermit anymore. I love the solitary life. <clears throat> I've always heard people say this. It's better to be single and wish you were married than to be married <clears throat> and wish you were single. And I like that. I do want to be married. I that is something I want to do again in my lifetime. <clears throat> I don't want to keep doing it till I get it right. The goal is to find someone that you can live with for a long time and that they can live with you. They're making the same decision about you that you're making about them. But I would much rather be single and wish I was married than married and wish I was single. <clears throat> If my ex-wife saw me now, she'd be like, oh boy, he really went over the edge. But I will tell you <clears throat> that Don Julio and this pipe are far more calming <laughs> and comforting than she ever was. Now that I look back on it, I can speak with, with a fair, with fair judgment. I'll end with this. At my tobacco store, and I told you this story, the guy said, I said, tell me about your customers, because I like interviewing people, talking to people. <clears throat> he says, cigarette smokers are always in a hurry. They got to have their nicotine. They come in, they buy their pack of cigarettes, and they get out. Cigar smokers, 50-50. <clears throat> I said, 50-50 what? 50% <clears throat> good guy. <clears throat> 50% asshole. And I'm like, okay, I could see that. I could see that. And then I said, what about your pipe <clears throat> clientele? He says, the pipe guys, everyone a gentleman. And I thought, yeah, there's the hierarchy. <clears throat> In a hurry, need nicotine. With other men. Smoking a big stogie, talking, laughing out loud, drinking. That's half of them. The other half are like the pipe smokers. Puff. They're not in a hurry. <clears throat> they dedicated, you know, 30 to 60 minutes to it. And the pipe smokers, everyone a gentleman. And the reason is this. That they're not in a hurry. They're not in it for the nicotine. You have to plan your time, and it's not, and you have to work at it. Pipes are things that you got to clean and pack and do stuff with to get an optimum smoke. So there is kind of like a, a, um, a protocol to peace. The peace of sitting for a half hour with a pipe. You can't be thinking about anxious things while you're puffing a pipe. Everyone a gentleman, that's what he said. I should ask him about facial hair. What percentage of your clientele have facial hair out of your cigarette smoker guys and your and of course now there's the the water pipe, the um what am I the hookah with and you're smoking shisha. Uh, 
I don't know who, I don't know anyone smoking them except like college kids right now trying to be cool or something. I don't know. I just never, I almost bought one last year. I can bet <clears throat> the statistics are like the cigar. 50% have beards, 50% don't when it comes to cigars. When it comes to pipes, <clears throat> I am guessing 70% of pipe smokers have beards. That's what I think. I have no hard facts or figures, but that's just my hunch. 70% of pipe smokers have beards. Now, what percentage of bearded guys smoke pipes? That would be an interesting factoid, right? <clears throat> I wish I could have a peace pipe. Whenever I have a pipe with a friend, our conversation usually just kind of calms down as we enjoy our pipes. So whether or not there's any peace herb <laughs> in the pipe, every pipe is a peace pipe, in my opinion. And I'm not pro-smoking for anybody, I'm pro-smoking for me. If it's something you enjoy, then enjoy it with me. <clears throat> I've been looking at shoes. Sperry Top Siders. I had a pair of uh, Dock Siders for many years that I really loved. Wore them until they almost fell off my feet. And I want to get a pair of Sperry's now dark brown, white rubber sole, the authentic original gold cup series, which means that it's lined with lambskin and the foot pad goes all the way, the, the whole length of the foot. And there's just a little tiny bit more padding because the regular, the regular top siders are meant for being on a deck of a boat and you're meant to, to grip wet, a wet surface not slip and also feel the contours of that surface so that they're not like one inch thick soles. But the gold cup is more comfortable to walk in and they last for 20 years or more. I mean you can wear them every day for 20 years. They're that type of they're that type of shoe. The regular Sperry top siders are anywhere from 80 to a hundred dollars. The gold cup series that are lined with lambskin, they're hand sewn and have the full length footbed, leather footbed, they're $160. So I would divide that by 20, divide that, you know, and, and you know, I'd say, all right, well then it costs me so much per year, so much per month to have these. I know guys that have had them for 20 years or more. Do you have an old pair of shoes? I usually wear things till they're almost dead and then I'll give them to somebody or I sell them on eBay or something like that to fund a new pair. I have a, this is a pipe I bought in Puerto Rico. It's a mini church warden. I'd say it's maybe seven inches long. Skinny, little skinny thing more like a Charles Dickens pipe. I have an aromatic in here. I have sweet Killarney in here. This is a, such a magnificent pipe. I bought this off a guy in San Juan, old San Juan, Puerto Rico. Perfect smoke every single time. Now this is the kind of thing you would smoke when you're in a top hat or a derby.
or a bent pipe like a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. That stays lit, that's beautiful. As many of you say, I can't believe I'm watching the guy drink and smoke for 30 minutes on a video. But for some weird reason, I enjoy it. And I will mirror that. I can't believe I'm a guy on video drinking, sipping a shot, smoking a pipe, and talking on video. So that disbelief goes in both directions, but for some strange reason, I enjoy it. Well, let's wrap this up, guys. Cheers and peace to you wherever you are. I bid you peace. Peace be with you. Cheers in a human way. Peace be with you in a spiritual way. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate the time you give me. And that's what this is about. It's about peace. The world is not at peace right now, and this might be the only time where we can, even people with different beliefs can sit and relax and enjoy and accept one another. Peace be with you, my friends.